let's uh, let's thank to the speaker again. <laughs> uh, next session is about oblivious transfer and secret sharing. This session is uh, we have two talks in this session, and the first talk is about constant rate oblivious transfer from noise channels. It's given by Yuval Ishai, Yer Kushlevich, uh, Rafael Ostrovich, o Ostrovsky, Mano Prahakaran, Amit Sahai, and Drew uh, Ulschreger. Uh, Mano will give a talk. Okay, uh, so this is a talk about uh, building an oblivious transfer uh, primitive from noisy channels. And what's new uh, is that we are getting a constant rate construction. Uh, okay, so let me j jump into the question. So why, are, why is the noisy channel interesting for cryptographers? Let me quote uh, Krepper and Killian from 88, who put it rather eloquently. From our point of view, an ideal communication line is a sterile, cryptographically uninteresting entity. Noise, on the other hand, breeds disorder, uncertainty, and confusion. Thus, it's a cryptographer's natural ally. Okay? So I can't, couldn't have put it better than that. So we, it, this you know, usefulness of noisy channel was observed even before that. Uh, it was put to good use by Weiner in 1975, uh, who built information theoretically secret communication, okay, without uh, any shared keys. And everything in this talk is information theoretic, so no computational assumption. And what Krepper and Killian did in their 88 paper was to show that it's not just communication, you can even do uh, secure computation uh, using noisy channels without any other uh, you know, uh, computational assumption or setups. Uh, so what is oblivious transfer? Uh, Many of you would be familiar with it. It's a two-party primitive, a two-party secure computation primitive, in which ideally uh, Alice has two inputs, x0 and x1, and Bob has a bit b, and they feed it into this black box. And as output, Bob gets x sub b. So Bob can pick up one of the bits that Alice has as input, and Alice wouldn't find out which bit he picked up. That's what's oblivious about it, and Bob, wouldn't, Bob gets only one bit. He wouldn't get the other one. And we want to build this from a noisy channel. For our purposes, a noisy channel is just a binary symmetric channel. Alice feeds in a bit, and it gets flipped with certain probability, let's say a small probability. Um, so this b is a, ran you know, a biased random bit in this case. Okay. So this is, what we, um, this is what they built from a noisy channel. They could build an oblivious transfer primitive. And why it's so interesting is uh, because of a result uh, first by Killian showing that oblivious transfer is complete for secure computation. That is to say, once you build oblivious transfer, then you can do any secure computation protocol. And now we know how to do it uh, quite efficiently, too. So, as I said, the, you know, they already, Krupa and Killian already built it. And what's new in this work is to do it at constant rate. So what is constant rate? So, or why is it interesting? The analogy is with uh, what Shannon did uh, in late 40s for communication, not secret communication, just reliable communication. So Ch Shannon's channel coding theorem shows that, you know, if, if you're gonna noisy channel, okay, firstly, it's pretty easy to reliably communicate over it. You could just, whenever you want to send one bit, instead you'll send many bits and, the receiver just takes a majority, so it's, there's a very easy way to use a noisy channel for, communi for reliable communication. What Shannon's uh, celebrated theorem was that actually you can do it at constant rate. To send um, a large number of bits, you just need to send a constant times uh, that many bits, and you can get a uh, very small error probability. So the analogous question for us is, um, you know, at what rate can you do secure computation over a noisy channel? Or more precisely, how many bits do you need to send over the noisy channel per 
uh, instance of OT that you uh, build. Okay. So if you look at the original construction by uh, Kreppel and Killian, it was not so great. Uh, they need to send uh, something like k to the 11 uh, bits uh, per bit of OT, per instance of OT, to drive the error down to 2 to the minus k. So k here is a security parameter. Uh, Kreppel improved it later to k cube, and Kreppel, Morozo, and Wolf uh, improved it to about k squared later. More recently, uh, Han, Han Gishai, Kushlitz, and Nielsen actually did manage to get constant rate, but they had to restrict uh, the adversary to behave in a semi-honest fa fashion. That is to say, it will follow the protocol honestly. So our goal is to replicate this result, or this result if you want to think of it that way, to get a constant rate uh, construction which, without making any restrictions on the adversary. So the adversary can be malicious, and this is the best you can do, and that's the goal, and that's what we do in this paper. Okay. Uh, and uh, I won't talk about it, but uh, you know, uh, noisy channel could be more general than BSC, and we can handle all those two with simple extensions to the protocol here. Okay, a very brief overview of uh, the techniques. So we use uh, what's called the IPS construction. This was uh, from a few years back, joint work with uh, Amit Sahai and Yuval Ishai. And uh, I won't go into the details, but this is a construction that has you know, let us build very efficient protocols for several things. Pretty, turns out to be pretty versatile. It needs a few components. So once you instantiate the components, the IPS compiler will put them together for you. So what are the components that we need in this case uh, or for IPS compiler? It needs an inner protocol, uh, uh, whatever that is. Uh, it needs to be, that protocol needs to be only weakly secure, namely secure against the semi-honest adversary. Another protocol called the outer protocol, which also has a weak kind of security guarantee, it needs to be secure. It's a protocol with a large number of parties. It needs to be secure only when a majority of the parties are honest. And a few string OTs. Okay. What is a string OT? It's just like what we earlier said uh, about OT, but instead of Alice having two bits as input, she has two strings as input. And Bob can pick up one of those strings. OK, so firstly, to put these things together, we, it turns out we need to modify the compiler slightly. Um, because now, in the IPS protocol, the inner protocol, the original IPS protocol, the inner protocol would run on top of an OT channel. Now it's going to run on top of a noisy channel. So we need to be able to handle that. That requires us to have an inner protocol which can tolerate some errors. Um, since I don't have much time, I won't go over the details. Uh, suffice it to say that, you know, whatever properties we need for this, uh, including the new properties we need, we can get those things uh, fairly uh, easily from the literature. Uh, in particular, we use, in, in, in the inner protocol, we use uh, the Harnik, uh, Ishai, Kushlois, Nielsen, uh, OT protocol for semi-honest adversaries. What is, uh, what I'll focus on for the rest of the talk uh, is how to build a string OT. And we need to do this efficiently, so I'm calling it a constant rate construction of string OT. So what exactly do I mean by constant rate construction for string OT? I said string OT is an object which is more general than you know, bit OT, right? Uh, but um, a, a constant rate string OT is an easier uh, question in that I'm just trying to instantiate one string OT, which handles a long string. And constant rate means to handle a t-bit string OT, just one instance of a string OT with of uh, t bit long strings, I should use about order t uh, uh, bits in the noisy channel. Okay. Uh, this is a new construction. And <clears throat> previously, similar result was known not over BSC or you know, that kind of noisy channels, but over more OT like noisy channels, in particular erasure channels. It's uh, worked by Brassard, Tropa, Wolf, and Yumai, Moroso, Nascimento. They do this. Book. Okay, so uh, we are going to look at this construction, how to build a constant rate string OT uh, from noisy channels. Um, now if you take, uh, so let's get started with an observation. So suppose you take, say, the Kropo Killian construction, uh, which gets an error two to the minus k using a polynomial, a polynomial in k number of uh, execution. Suppose you set that k to be a constant. Okay. So then it becomes a constant rate protocol but its security is not so great. It has 
a constant security error instead of a two to the minus k. You know, now k is a constant, so it has a constant security error. So I'll call that kind of protocol fuzzy. Okay. Uh, and our challenge then, you know, is to take a, you know, go from this constant error to negligible error. But that's what we are going to use IPS compiler for. And what we are left with is then to build a string OT. So we need to build a string OT, a constant rate string OT, from these fuzzy OT objects. Okay. And in fact, I won't work with fuzzy OT. I'll work with something fairly similar. It's fuzzy OLE. OLE stands for Oblivious Linear Function Evaluations. Pretty similar. Uh, Alice has two uh, field elements from some finite field. It'll be a constant set field for us. Uh, two field elements A and C, Bob has an element B, and Bob gets his output A, B plus C. Okay, so we'll, we'll now, you know, we are given this fuzzy OLE, we, are, we want to build a string OT. That's a goal. Uh, okay, so we do this in two steps. First is we'll reinterpret this fuzzy OLE as a, what I'll call a shaky OLE, and I'll come back to what that is in a second. And once you build this shaky OLE, and it's a perfect shaky OLE. So it's not fuzzy, there's nothing, there's no error about it. Um, it's perfect, but it's shaky. And then use this shaky OLE to build string OT. So I need to go tell you what these things are. So what is this fuzzy and shaky business? Um, so to recap, a fuzzy protocol is a protocol which realizes a function f, for us it is OLE, with some constant security error. Okay, so security error means a gap between um, you know, the real protocol execution and ideally what it should have been, essentially. A shaky functionality, call it F sigma, first flips a coin, you know, uh, independent of everything else, it just first flips a coin of, with a bias sigma. If the coin turns up heads, then it works as F. Otherwise, with probability sigma, uh, if it comes up tails, then it completely yields to the adversary's control. The adversary can see what's going into the protocol and uh, it can uh, control uh, what comes out of the protocol. And the theorem is that an epsilon fuzzy protocol for functionality f, or deterministic functionality f, is a perfectly secure protocol for a shaky version of the uh, functionality, where the sigma depends on epsilon. All these things for us will be constants, so never mind. So why is this interesting? It's interesting as a composition theorem. So imagine you run many instances of this fuzzy protocol. What kind of guarantee do you have? You run n instances of this fuzzy protocol, well, the best thing you could say, maybe, is that the error is now n times epsilon. But if epsilon is some constant, then n times epsilon is greater than one, and having a you know, security error greater than one means you're getting nothing. What this, protocol, what this theorem lets you do is salvage something, and something quite useful out of this. It says that, oh, don't think of this as just a fuzzy protocol. Think of it as a perfectly secure protocol for this shaky functionality. So then when you run an instance of this shaky functionality, about, you know, about sigma fraction of them will yield to the adversary's control, but the remaining fraction are good copies of f. Okay. So that's why it's very, very useful for us. Um, I don't have much time, so I'll very quickly try to, maybe I'll skip this, try to give you a little example to give you a flavor of what this, uh, uh, what it, you know, how to prove that a, fuzzy protocol is a perfectly, perfect protocol for a shaky functionality. So we'll take a very degenerate functionality, f. Actually, this functionality produces no output. It just takes a bit from Bob. So very easy functionality to securely realize. But we will instead look at this fuzzy protocol to realize this. Uh, so there's a, a funny protocol where, with probability half, Bob will actually send his input. There is no need for him to send his input, but you know, it's a fuzzy protocol. He does that. And otherwise, he sends nothing. He does a reasonable thing, right? So a, uh, if, the, if Bob's input is 0, then with probability half, he sends a bot. With probability half, he will send his input. That is 0. If his input is 1, it's an input coming from the environment outside. If his input is 1, he'll send 1 with probability half and bot with probability half. Okay. Let me tell you that this is a fuzzy protocol, so there is a way to simulate it for those of you are familiar with the definition. Let me give you the simulation, simulator. So the environment again sends you either zero or one, the simulator doesn't see it. Simulator now has to pretend that there was a, it has to simulate the message from Alice to Bob. It doesn't know what Y is, right? 
Well, what does it do? With probability half, it can send a bot, no problem. But otherwise, it's supposed to send the actual bit that Bob got, which it cannot, so instead it sends a random bit. Okay, so it probably won't for those. And it'll do the same thing irrespective of whether y equal to zero or y equal to one, it doesn't know. And if you look at this, uh, you know, this distribution and this distribution, uh, I mean, this is, depending on whether environment choose, goes to, choose, to go, choose to go here or here, doesn't matter, or as a convex combination of the two, the simulation error is going to be one fourth. Okay, so this is a fuzzy protocol with one fourth error. I'll show you that this is a perfectly secure protocol for a shaky functionality with uh, half, a sigma equal to half. Basically, I'll need to build a new simulator. Let me actually show you the new simulator. So the simulator doesn't have any choice or option over how f behaves. f behaves as it wants. So it's, with some probability, this f, f half um, doesn't fail with probability half. Okay? In that case, the simulator doesn't know Alice's in, Bob's input, so he just needs to send bot all the time. I write a half because it, this happens with only a half probability. Um, and this is, uh, this numbers are such that it's dominated by both these numbers. I could, in particular, subtract this from this intuitively. And what is remaining, I write down here. Now this thing is when the functionality fails. So if you look at this, this to uh, behave like this, the simulator needs to know whether y equal to zero or y equal to one because the behavior is different in the two settings. But this is okay because this is when the functionality has failed and the simulator can see what the input to the functionality is. Okay. And if you put these two things together, you will get exactly what the real protocol behavior is. So it's going to be a perfect simulation. First things get much more complicated when you have, when you know, it's an art degenerate function and you can look at the paper for the details. But we have this uh, theorem. Um, and it holds for any deterministic function, probably something very useful you could use elsewhere. Uh, so I'll skip the fine print and so forth. Um, OK, now you have shaky OLE. How do you build string OG from it? How do you build, if you have a non-shaky OLE, very quickly, uh, the, each of this is one, you know, let's think of them as bit OLEs. Alice would send bits of this, uh, she picks two random strings, x0, x1. And she would send you know, A and C, right, to the OLE. She will send these two inputs, x1 minus x0 and x0. Bob will send B. So Bob will get the linear evaluation, x1 minus x0 times B plus x0. That is xB. He'll get bits of this in each of these instances of OLE. Now, if he is a malicious Bob, he, can, he need not send B in all instances. So he can learn some bits of x0, some bits of x1. And there's a fairly standard trick. Alice will extract a few bits out of this uh, x0 and x1 using a strong extractor and so forth, and she'll use that to mask the string and send it to Bob. Uh, but the problem with this when this OLE is not perfect is that, first of all, I mean, main problem here is that Alice can find out what Bob is asking even if one of these OLE instances fails. Okay? So you cannot use this directly. How we fix that is by using a constant rate encoding of uh, these uh, things. Very briefly, um, this is kind of a homomorphic encoding. It's a linear code. There are two codes, actually, uh, two encodings. They are randomized with the homomorphic property that, so one is, you know, I call it n, and the other is n square. Uh, think of them as reed solomon uh, code based secret sharing of uh, degree d and degree 2d. Okay? So then it has this kind of a homomorphic property, not hard to see. Uh, where the star represent uh, coordinate wise multiplication. It also has error correcting and secret sharing properties, and we also need it to be sufficiently randomizing. It can all be instantiated using MPC friendly codes. You, you know, look at next talk for more details since I'm out of time. Um, and the bottom line is you can build, uh, you, you can, if, if you use the encodings, then you, what you get in the original construction I showed a little bit earlier, even with a shaky OLE, will be a secure OT. Okay? Um, so just to summarize, um, so we build this, so we have this uh, constant rate string OT. We put them all together into this IPS compiler. So what are the things that go into it? An outer protocol um, which instantiates n instances of OT among a large number of parties. An inner protocol which is semi-honest secure. And IPS compiler needs something called the watch list, which is uh, what, you know, where we need this uh, string OTs, and we'll use the string OTs I just described. Okay. 
and the string OT is used this uh, homomorphic arithmetic encoding scheme, uh, and uh, we crucially relied on this fuzzy to shaky security. Okay, that's all. Thanks. We have no time for questions, so let's move to the next.